Joanne Banco, author, designer, and sewing instructor. I've got a trendy top to show you today. It's a kimono style over blouse. Very, very popular in uh, ready to wear and very pretty as well. So take a look at the garments I have on the dress form. You'll notice right away, I've got two completely different variations as far as fabric. Believe it or not, the first one here, the one that's just a little more dressed up, is made out of a scarf. I'm gonna show you how I did that in a minute, just give you some tips on that. And then the second one that could be a little bit more casual, but has that great trim on the bottom, is made from a double gauze fabric. Very light, very soft, very comfortable to wear. I think you'll agree, these are beautiful blouses. You can make them short, you can make them long, and you can trim them any which way you like to. You can use fringe, you can use lace, you can use all different things for the edges. So we're gonna focus a little bit on that today. Let's go over to the table here and take a look at my, kind of my spread here of patterns and pattern options. When you look for patterns for this kimono style over the blouse, the reason it gets its name is because it's very, very loose, like a kimono, and basically has just like straight sleeves. So it drops very straight off the shoulder and has just a very simple center front opening. You could add ties, you could add a button and a loop, you could add more ties, you could do whatever you want. You may even find some styles that are completely closed in the front. Lots and lots of variations. But what you'll characteristically find, and you can see this a little bit better on the actual pattern um, instruction leaflet, more so even than the color pictures, is the style of sleeve. I've got one that's got a perfectly straight cap, one that's got a little bit more shape, and then I've got two patterns that use a cut-on sleeve, makes it very, very simple to sew, very comfortable to wear. So how about that scarf idea? Well, I don't know about you, but I have things you know, that I collect, and one of them is scarves. It just seems like I can't resist buying another scarf, especially when I'm traveling and I see some different ones in some of the gift shops. Sometimes we end up with too many scarves in our closet and we're ready to just do something different with them. So think about doing this instead of fabric. I took the very straight cut sleeve and I laid it out on this border style scarf. So doesn't matter which way you go, my sleeve would go one way, my other front and back pattern pieces would go on the other side. What you do wanna make sure that you check is what your finished length is gonna be because your finished length is gonna be whatever the scarf is finished at. So you may have to adjust that a little bit, but your hem is already done and your fringe is already there. So you're all finished as far as that goes. Now what about fabric? You're gonna see me sew on some gauze, that gauzy fabric in a minute. Oh, and by the way, if you run out of um, scarf fabric, check, you might have another scarf in a very similar color range. Or don't be afraid to mix and match with a little bit of fabric. All right, so when we make this kimono blouse, again, very simple, simple straight lines, simple seams, but we're gonna want to make sure that we finish the seams nicely and then finish the edge. I'm gonna focus on the edge finishing technique where I sewed lace instead of um, fringe in just a minute. But take a look here at my samples that I've got with my seams and seam finishes. I'm addicted to the serger. It's just my go-to machine, especially when I'm dealing with fabrics that are very, very ravelly and very light. Take a look at this little sample here, and if I show you that serger edge and then I flip it under, you're not gonna be able to see it because it disappears. That's one of the great things about that serger finish. It's so light that it doesn't show through. Just pick a fabric, um, pick a thread color that um, blends in with your fabric and you're not even gonna see it on the underside. For traditional um, sewing, I would sew my seam and then serge finish the edge like I did here. That way it's nice, clean finish. Of course, I did it with a dark contrasting thread. You're gonna wanna use something that matches or blends, but I wanted you to be able to see that really, really well. And then for the bottom hem edge of where my sleeve will be and my bottom hem that I'm gonna sew the lace on, I also want that to be finished. Now, if you don't have a serger, experiment with some of your other options. You may wanna actually um, buy some very lightweight fabric and literally bind that edge so that it's completely covered. You wanna prevent that raveling from getting um, worse and especially through, through wash, and, wash and wear. All right, I want you to see one more little thing here before we move over to the machine. 
I've got an area on my uh, kimono blouse where I need hems, obviously. Sleeves and bottom, we're gonna hem those areas. So I'm gonna serge finish that, and then I'm gonna actually turn that up. You're gonna see, I'm gonna turn it up to the, wrong, to the right side of the fabric instead of traditional wrong side. I'll explain that more in a minute. But I want you to see there's two ways you can do this. Just simply turn and press, or if you have trouble pressing fine fabrics, here's a tip for you. Baste just a scant distance from where you're gonna actually need to press, and then when you go to the iron, it's very easy for you to flip that up and just press right on that basted line. Pull your basting stitches out when you're done. Let's swing over to the machine and see how to finish that edge technique. All right, I've got steps already done for you because this would take a little time. But all of my patterns called for simple, plain, half inch, bias binding for finishing those front edges. Of course, you could cut your own bias, and in fact, I did for a couple of them, but purchasing bias makes it very, very easy. The first step is you're gonna take that bias and you're gonna press it open because we're not gonna be using it in its folded form. We're gonna refold it. The next thing I'm gonna do is stay stitch the edge of my fabric so that it keeps that from stretching out, and I'm gonna do that just a slight narrow distance from what my actual seam allowance is. My seam allowance is 3 8 of an inch. So I've just done a little straight stitching, we call stay stitching, a quarter inch from the edge. For the next step then, I am going to sew the bias to the right side, right sides together, and I've got a 3 8 of an inch seam. I wanna get rid of some of that seam allowance, so my next step is to trim that down to a quarter of an inch. All right, we move over here, and we can see that I have now turned that under, and I've literally pressed over that raw edge and encased it with that bias binding. Now, in all of these samples, I left the bottom edges raw so that you could just get a little bit better um, picture of visibility of what I did. But on my final sample, my very last step, let's move these out of the way, my very last step is to top stitch that binding in place. And here, now you notice where I said earlier that I was gonna press my hem edges, again, either on the sleeves or the bottom hem edge to the wrong side. That's not in the pattern that way. That's my little way of doing it because I think you're gonna see that it gives a really nice, neat finish. So once I've got that bias top stitched, let me show you how I did that. I'm just gonna put that under the machine and I'm just gonna use a regular straight stitch about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Again, I'm just doing this on a little piece for you so that you can see. Cut that thread and see how nice and neat that is. That's gonna give you a really clean finish on the outside of your garment and on the inside. So let me show you how I did the trim technique. I've got another kimono blouse here, almost finished. And I'll spread it open here so you can see it just a little bit better. Again, this just lovely double gauze fabric is actually two layers of very fine cotton woven together in a special way. It comes out puckered, but that's a good thing because that way when you wear it, you don't have to worry about wrinkles. So I've got my fringe partway sewn. I'm gonna show you the edge that I already have stitched and I'm gonna show you on the machine how I did that. I'm gonna select a triple zigzag stitch and I'm gonna simply place that right under the foot and stitch away. If I need to move that forward just a little bit at the beginning, I'll do that because sometimes you have a little bit of a bump there. And then I just continue along. It, that's as easy as it is. We just finish the, um, the lace at the same time that we're hemming. And I think you're gonna see now why I did the wrong side turned up to the right side for that beautiful finish on the wrong side. So be sure to visit the website, learn how to make your own gorgeous, trendy, popular, and pretty kimono blouse.